Hello everyone, and welcome to Sunless Skies. The last game that I played from Fail Better Game was Sunless Sea, which I did a couple of episodes. I should have continued, but I didn't, so I feel like, you know, I might as well play through Sunless Skies, or at least get as far as I'd like to. Um, it is a really great game that I enjoyed. It's a kind of a horror, steampunk kind of story game with some fighting elements. So, let's start. I am going to do a Merciful campaign just because I'm more interested in the story than I am in combat. Let's see. I think standard is fine. We'll see if I suck really bad. I might have to do something different, but we'll see. Log of Her Majesty's Locomotive, the Orphean, March 14th, 1905. Our expedition to the Domains of the Dead have been eventful. The Orphean is damaged and in grievous need of repairs and supplies. We are returning in haste to the Reach, where I hope to make port at New Winchester. May God be with us for a thousand deaths weighed in the sky. Final entry of Captain Amelia Charity Whitlock, DCM, written shortly before her death. All right, so here we are. And they have cruise control. All right, so not much of an introduction, at least here. You've reached the Reach, an untamed, sunless span of the heavens. London's new frontier, a celestial garden run wild. Dodge left. Cool. Your journey back from the Blue Kingdom was tumultuous. Your locomotive is damaged, and Captain Whitlock badly wounded. I really love the background and everything that's going on in the game. As first officer, the crew looks to you. The nearest station is New Winchester. Can you get the Orphean there safely? Looks like some... parts. Much to the relief of your stokers, you find a barrel of fuel among the detritus. A wrecked drifts here, less fortunate even than you. We should scavenger for parts, a crewman suggests. Sure. The wreck hangs in the sky, pocked with recent gunfire. You and the boarding party don your sky suits, garments of waxed canvas lined with felt to protect against the cold of the sky. Two of the crew are whispering as they dress. What business could Captain Whitlock have in the Blue Kingdom anyway? Why the devil did we trespass on the districts of the dead? You silence him. Now is not the time. Leap across the wreck. The gap between the two engines isn't wide, but the endless fathoms of heaven gape beneath it. You jump. Your stomach lurches with vertigo as stars blaze above you and below. The air of heavens is thin and torn by unpredictable winds. Then your boots hit the running board of the Osmandius, and your leather-gloved hands fumble for a hold. One of your companions throws you a line, and you lash the two engines together. Only then do the rest of your boarding party follow you. One of them forces open exterior hatch, and you clamber inside. Her interior is cold, unlit, and whistles with wind. Your party's lamp spread buttery light over the narrow, paneled passages. You make your way towards the hold, stepping over bodies crumpled in the corridor. Unfortunately, your way is blocked. A bulkhead has managed inward by a well-aimed barrage. So we can either clear the obstruction or lead your party on a more precarious part. Hmm. 
I'm gonna go with try to f oh shit the rest of the boarding party follow you without enthusiasm you recall the first time you climbed outside an engine helping the captain fix a leak in an exterior pipe the wind hand shrieked buffeting at you you asked the captain what would happen if you slipped you fall she answered tersely but where to you ask she looked down then back the sky's steps spiraled all about you. Away, she said, and you heard her fear. Back in the presence, you tumbled back into the Osmandias through a shattered window. Your party spills in after you, teeth chattering, eyes wide with familiar terror. You have reached the Osmandias hold, a ruin of smashed cargo and spilled supplies. Hopefully somewhere amidst the detritus, you can find parts to repair the Orphean and restock your stores. We'll do a search. Your companions work quickly. The Osmandius' hull has begun to creak. Your actions on board may have compromised its integrity. You find enough food and gear to restock your supplies and enough spare parts to make necessary repairs to the Orpheum. The food will need to be thoroughly thawed, of course, but you've eaten worse in the skies. Oh ho! cries one of your party, prying the lid off a long crate. It holds a cannon, still nestled in straw. Another crewman pulls a battered bird cage from a pile of ruined cargo. Within the cage, you see something winged and furred open a sullen eye. You examine your finds. So we gain supplies and hulls. So hull is basically the health of your engine and ship. The Osmandias emits a long, juddering creak. Your boarding party exchanged nervous glances. From the chaos of its hold, you have retrieved repairs and supplies and discovered some useful equipment. A gun that could be mounted on your locomotive, and a bat. Let's see. You claim both this and the bat. Liberate a diffident bat and employ it as a scout. The heavens are wide, so locomotives use scouts, like bats, to locate things of interest. Ports, resources, wrecks like this one to scavenge. The bat treats its rescue as an inconvenience, and immediately begins haggling over pay. You offer it to put it back in its damn cage and leave it on the Osmandias, at which point it becomes more polite. You doubt it will last. The Osmandias... Let's see, we already read this. Let's mount the Jerusalem cannon. The Cotterill and Hather Sage Jerusalem fires single shells to good range more or less accurately. You order two of your party to get it back on your vessel and fit it immediately. The Osmandius groans again. The structure shudders spasmatically. Alright, let's... I'm just gonna return. You lead your boarding party back to your vessel. Unshackled from her, the buckling Osmandias, you stroke your engines and steam away. Restocked, repaired, and rearmed, the crew give a ragged cheer. Alright, let's continue. Press F to send out your scout. So they kind of go around in a circle. Scouts. Your scout discovered something. To see what it is, open your chart. The compass icon in the toolbar. So they found this, which is a station. And it looks like there are quite a few different worlds or areas that we can go to, which is definitely different than Sunless Sea. Okay. Summoned by Captain Whitlock. The walls of the captain's cabins are lined with a hodgepodge of curios from across the sky. Captain Whitlock lies in bed. Black marks cover her skin like a monstrous brand. When she coughs, coils of acrid smoke pour from her lungs. So we can either inquire about her injuries or approach the bedside. I'm going to approach. The captain opens her eyes as you draw near. She attempts a smile. Her mouth is blistered from the blue fires that dance on her tongue. Her hands grip your arms. Her skin is hot as a kettle. Made arrangements. The Orphean will be yours. Her voice is just a rasp of burned meat breath. <laughs> but promise. 
She breaks off to scream a word in a language that was not made for human mouths. When she resumes speaking English, she is weaker, her request little more than a gasp. Promise me one last service. Promise. So, promise you will obey, make no promise, or pull away. Or demand to know why she took the Orphean to the Blue Kingdom. Uh, I'll promise to obey. Whatever it is, you'll see it done. She sinks back, relieved. All in my will, she gasps. Be a better. She breaks off, has the sigil burned into her bones flare, glowing cherry red through her flesh and skin. Better captain than I. The effort exhausts her. She sinks back into the scorched pillows and a twisting, frantic feaser. The walls of the captain's... Yeah, we already read that. Okay, so... Take your leave. You have an engine to command. You have... You leave the cabin in the scorched stink of its air behind and return to the bridge. New Winchester is further than you'd like, and the captain hasn't long left. I fire. Oh, I have to. Okay, so I think when it hits red, it means that my engine's overheating. Oh. I'm not good at this, so... Well, they don't seem like they are either. Just ram them. Ah! There we go. Uh, I took a bit of damage. So, you approach the buckled wreckage poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory. Let's see. Let's raid the remains. I feel like I'm still kind of healthy. Your boarding party returns with wallets and watches, cufflinks, lockets, and keepsakes. You store them in the safe to be pawned when, if, you make it back to port. Let's see. So it looks like there's a path over there. I'm not sure what this side takes, but or what's down here? Bancroft Forum. I really love the layering. Gabriel's archive. I'm going the right direction. The music is also really pretty. I don't think that's anything that we need. Oop, froze a little bit. Nothing to report. Oh, there's a lighthouse maybe? Kissigar Gardens. And Young's found is where the Nothing to report. give you much of a direction, do they?
taste of smog, the sound of iron. We are home. Where is home? Over here. Oh, didn't mean to send him back out. Where's the dog? Alexander Yang Clan? Distant clamor of engine yards, that crushing of small dudes. Okay, there's the port. The local headquarters of the Windward Company, Lungsen's proxy in the Deliver port reports here to receive rewards and win the company's favor. Uh, hopefully I can find some fuel. The offices are cramped, typewriters ring, assistants scurry between desks. Beleaguered managers struggle to make themselves heard over the hubbub. Eventually, our harried assistant makes you a cup of tea. I'm afraid everyone's busy today, but if you want to make yourself useful, we always need up-to-date reports on events beyond New Winchester. Bring them straight here, though, not to... He nods out the window towards Victory Hall, where the... Colonial Assembly gathers? That lot. Queen in the country and all that. Okay. Okay. I don't think there's much else we can do here. Okay, we might be screwed. Oh, that... What? Okay... Maybe we're supposed to go this way. to go here? few days. I think three have passed by now. Oh! I 
guess we'll return home. <laughs> I guess I really went the wrong way. Oop! Wrong way. Back up. Okay, I guess that was the wrong way. wreckage you can recover the weaponry small weapon you can equip at the dock raid the remains often carry let's go for come that didn't really help but okay I gained some hull probably shouldn't use that bat anymore <laughs> going the right way. <laughs> I'm really confused. Where am I supposed to be going? This way? This way? I guess this way. I guess I'm not a great captain. Definitely interesting. Sorry for going on an odd tangent of <laughs> where I was going. Alright, so you coast into the bustled, the dim, 
the soot and the steam of Wolvesey Station. It's clogged with other engines, scrappy mining locomotives from Lustum Way, weathered explorers gleaming with frost, sleek company vessels with bright brass fittings. No sooner have you pulled into the sightings that a brusque station manager bustles over. He requests to come aboard. I must speak with your captain, he insists, brandishing a ledger. The usual formalities. Look to the Orpheans doctor. He had just appeared at your shoulder. His face is solemn, his hat in his hand. He lowers his eyes. The crew exchange bleak, wordless looks. The Orphean itself feels suddenly more empty. The station master looks confused. You inform him that, unfortunately, Captain Whitlock has just passed. Ah, he says neutrally. Sorry to hear that. Very sad, very sad. He waits for what he considers an appropriate minute and a half before continuing. Alas, even amidst tragedy, the cogs of bureaucracy must turn. If Captain Whitlock is deceased, the station authority require the answers from the first officer. He dons a set of spectacles and locates his pens. It will be relatively painless. Name, background, purpose of visit, etc. Shall we begin? All right, so here we get to create our captain. I believe that most of these do kind of have some form of significance later in the story. So you can be a street urchin. You begin with high veils, the skill of mating. You begin with high iron, high hearts, an academic, high mirrors. And then it won't let me see what the last one is. There it is. A priest, high hearts. Zailer, High Iron, Ministry Auditor, High Mirrors, or a Revolutionary, High Fables. I think I'm going to do... Let's go with a poet. You are a poet. Poetry was popular in old London. Some poets sought fame, others art. Some simply enjoyed bohemian company. Three preeminent artistic movements have come to promise. The Celestials, the Nocturnals, or the Sovereign School. So the Celestials. In old London, they wrote nostalgically of the surface and the sun. Now they write of stars and the treasures of heaven. The Nocturnals, a radically outlawed school that delights in freedoms found in the darks. Or the Sovereign School, a new tradition born in the Empress's court. Their works are patriotic, bombastic, and occupied with iconography of time, clocks and seasons and sand. So this will increase iron, veils, or mirrors. I'm gonna go with the Celestials. Choose an ambition. What does winning mean to you? Wealth, fame, or truth? Let's see. I'm gonna say wealth. To win, gather a substantial retirement fund, acquire lodgings at a port hub, and retire. Okay, now we get to change what we look like. That's fine. No hat. Give me a nice beard. I'm gonna go with chin seven. That's fine. our first episode. Thank you for watching, and I will be back soon with episode two. Let me know if you enjoyed the recording, if you have any suggestions on whether I should use a different mic or anything, if the sound was too loud, just let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to adjust things. Thank you!